What's up everybody? Welcome to another video. So today I'm going to be talking about exactly how much it cost me to build my rally roll cage and how long it actually took. So if you haven't seen any of my other videos on actually building the cage, which you should go check those out, I have the entire build process on my YouTube channel, then you probably noticed that it's a pretty intricate cage. If you've seen FD spec cages or like SCCA time trial cages or something like that, they're not as intricate. They definitely don't have near as many bars. Uh, and most of them you're not even allowed to have that many bars. So this is a cage that is 100% prepped for stage rally as following FIA stage rally rules. So I've gotten quite a few questions from a lot of people about how much it actually cost, where I went and bought all the stuff, what size tubing, and what all that I actually needed to build it. So I figured I'd throw this video together and try to answer some of those questions. So the first thing on the list and the most expensive and the most abundant material in the actual cage is of course the tubing. So that made up most of the expense on the roll cage construction. So the actual total for all of these bars that I paid was 674.15. So I went with drawn over mandrel, mild steel, uh, and this is one and three quarters 095 wall. Um, depending on what type of roll cage that you're actually building, whether it's FD spec or like I was saying, SCCA time trials, you can probably have skinnier tubes, but this is the requirement for uh, FIA stage rally. As you can see, there's bars everywhere in this cage. Now, depending on what type of cage you're building, like I was saying, FD spec, SCCA time trials, whatnot, it's all gonna have different requirements for what you can add and what you have to add. Um, obviously, I have a lot of optional bars that I didn't have to put in here, uh, but I choose to because of the fact that I kind of wanted the extra stability and protection in case there ever is a bad wreck. Now, I purchased seven sticks of 24-foot sections of the material that I used. Uh, now, depending on if you mess up quite a bit like I did, you might use all of it. I had a little bit left. I ended up with about 12 feet left over. Um, and that was with quite a few hiccups and messing up in the beginning. Now, I didn't mess up on any of the major bars like the main hoop, um, which that's pretty much the only major bar, uh, but I did mess up on one of the forward laterals, which is also a very large bar, uh, but I only messed up on one, so it didn't take too much material. Uh, so the more bars that you actually mess up on and you end up bending improperly, that's just gonna be more money that you have to spend on roll cage material and more bars that you're eventually gonna to have to buy. So if you're a professional and you're really good at doing this, I could see you being able to just get more of a precise footage for exactly how much tubing you needed um, and then stick with that. Uh, but with me, I bought plenty of excess, which is why it came out to $675. So the next thing up on the list is eighth inch plate for what we actually needed. So I ended up getting an entire four by eight sheet and I split it with my buddy that was building a cage for his drift car. Um, I did not need that much. There's a very large section sitting over there in my garage of about half of that. Now I spent, let's see, 58.85 total. Well, that was half of it. Um, he bought the other half. So it was 110 plus tax um, for the entire sheet. We split it in half, so I paid 58.85. Like I was saying, you really don't need that much material. I've got a very large section left, and that's after building all of my rocker boxes, the plating for where the cage goes, and whatnot. So you could probably get away with buying a smaller section if you can, but if you go somewhere like a hardware store like Home Depot or Lowe's, it's gonna be a lot more expensive for a section of eighth inch plate than it is if you actually go to a steel supply store. So if I spend $110, on steel at Lowe's or something like that, I barely would have gotten like any eighth inch because they jack up the prices so much. Now, one thing that kind of makes it easier is you can kind of size it. So if you're gonna make rocker boxes that are a certain width or length, you can kind of already get those sizes pre-cut out and they're really straight and you don't have to worry about that. Uh, now, obviously when you get a large sheet like I have, and it's only as accurate as the ways you actually have to cut it. Now, I have a plasma cutter, and if I hook up, hook up a straight edge and whatnot, it works out pretty well, uh, and I can get some pretty clean cuts out of it. Now, you have to use eighth inch plate or three millimeters pretty much anywhere that the cage actually comes in contact with the shell. You can't just weld bars to sheet metal, because that's a big no-no, and it's just gonna punch right through if you actually get in a wreck. Just Google that Mustang that actually rolled over 
and they just bolted their cage because it was a bolt-in roll cage straight to the sheet metal of their car and it just punched straight through and the entire top of the car was just completely flattened. It's pretty bad. You can even see the cage sticking up through the floor. Pretty dangerous. So as you can see, I built these boxes out of eighth inch. I also lined the floor with eighth inch as well. Um, for my seat mounts, I had to plate all of these with eighth inch for the harness sections where you, the harness actually is going to get bolted to. Those are all eighth inch that's welded to sheet metal. Um, so there's quite a few sections that you actually have to use it. So I've got boxes here, there, in the back, over here, plates in the rear of the cage, and then plates in the front of the cage where they tie into the front strip towers. So there's a lot of little sections of plate, so you need a decent amount. Now you definitely don't need a four by four section of eighth inch, but you probably at least need about a two by two section of that because I used about half. Um, and that's if you don't mess up or anything like that. So depending on your skills, you might use less than me and you might use more. So you just kind of have to know your fabrication skills and whether or not you're gonna need extra. I always like to buy extra because I hate going to the store in the middle of stuff, but I still end up doing that all the time. Now the next thing that we have on the list is 18 gauge sheet metal. Once again, I went with a complete four by eight uh, section or plate of steel um, and I split half with my buddy that's also building a cage. Now I used all of that for all of my gussets. So all of these, all of the taco gussets, the A pillar gussets, the B pillar gussets. I also patched my sunroof, so I probably didn't need the whole thing if I didn't patch my sunroof, um, are all made out of 18 gauge sheet metal. So depending on if you're building a drift car or whatnot, um, it's going to require different areas that you actually have to gusset. Um, drift cars and drift ca cages really don't require very many uh, gusseting on like X bars or these joints or anything like that. Now for a roll cage for a rally car, all of these joints are actually required to have gussets. So for the A pillar support bar, got to have taco gussets in there. Uh, for your X and your main hoop, if that's what you ran, you got to have taco gussets back there and you have to have gussets in your door bar if you do an X whether it's two continuous bars or it's one continuous bar and then two sections actually welded to it to make the X. Now I decided to actually add in these A pillar gussets as well as a windshield gusset up here that you can't see uh, and the B pillar gussets. Uh, I like how they look. They're kind of like more of an aesthetic thing and they kind of add a little bit more rigidity to the cage and tie it in a little bit more to the chassis. So that's why I did it. Now, depending on your rules, you may not be allowed to do that. Now that's all I actually have for raw materials to build the entire roll cage. There's not very many different types of materials that you actually need to build it. It's really just tubes, plate, and sheet metal that you actually need. Um, so I spent $46 on half of a four by eight section of sheet metal. That was definitely way cheaper at a metal supply store. All of these prices are based off of going to a local metal supply store and purchasing it all somewhat in bulk from them because they have way cheaper prices than if you A, buy online, because then you got to deal with shipping, which is ridiculous. And usually they're only going to ship you uh, like 12 foot section of the tubes at the most. Uh, usually they won't even want to go that big. Usually six foot sections are the most economical to actually ship. So you'll spend a lot of money if you don't have a steel shop somewhere around you uh, or somewhere you can go in like an industrial type area uh, to buy somewhat in bulk. Now, next on the list of expenses, which added up quite a bit, are consumables. So obviously there's a lot of consumable things when you actually build a roll cage, whether that's welding wire, uh, welding gas, cut off wheels, things like that. So I added up all the prices of stuff that I had to buy to actually build it. And the first one that I have on that is 100% Argon. That was for TIG welding. Now, if you're not going to TIG weld your cage, you don't need that. You just need C25 or 25 carbon uh, 75 argon. Um, and depending on if that's what you're going to be using, you might need two tanks, whereas I only needed one. So I MIGged and TIGged this cage. Um, I TIGged about half and then I was running out of time, so I MIGged the other half. I uh, probably shouldn't have, should have TIGged it all because it definitely comes out a lot nicer and prettier looking but in the long run, it saved me a lot of time. Now I ended up going through one full tank of 100% argon and one full tank of C25 for MIG welding. Um, and I also have the large 150 cubic inch 
uh, tanks for mine. So depending on your sizes, you might have to refill more and prices in the area. But for me, it was 87.65 to refill both of those uh, once. So it was combined, that's per cylinder. So $87 per cylinder, um, which comes out to, it's like $175 um, total for the both of them. Next thing on that list is TIG filler rod. So I went with ER70 S2. Uh, because that's like the most common uh, that you use for welding uh, mild steel. And I used about a 10 pound box, honestly. Maybe not full 10 pounds, but that's just what I averaged because that's what I bought. Uh, and I got it off Amazon. It's heck of a lot cheaper. Just some decent stuff off there. And that was $41.75. Uh, next, MIG welding wire. So I went through over a 10 pound spool of MIG welding wire. There's a lot of welding to do on this, whether it's plates, um, all of these gussets, all the bars and whatnot have to be 100% welded all the way around. So there's a lot of welding involved with a roll cage. So I ended up one 10 pound spool was about $31. I went through about one and a half. So that's what I accounted for. Uh, $46.75 for MIG welding wire. Now, before you can actually start welding all of these, obviously you have to cut them. Um, and that's another pretty big expense. Now, depending on the materials that you actually have available and the tools that you have, uh, you're going to cut that in different ways. Now I use the chop saw primarily for all of mine, which I have a cold cut uh, chop saw. So it spins at a slower RPM. Those are a lot more expensive to buy initially, but you don't have to use abrasive wheels. So the cutoff wheels actually last a heck of a lot longer because it's actually a real saw blade. It's going to make cleaner cuts. Um, it's less noise and it's just way faster to actually cut the material. Uh, I'd look it up if you're interested in that, but I am going to come out with a video pretty soon about all of the tools that I actually use to build it, what's actually necessary and some extra tools along the way. Uh, if you want to spend a little bit more and have a little bit easier of a time from what I found of actually building my cage. And so cutoff wheels, uh, these are just for your grinders. Um, so if you're going to use like a normal four and a half inch, angle grinder, which you have to use for a lot of areas. Um, I definitely used it quite a bit. I just bought a 50 pack off Amazon and I still have a bunch, but that's my price that I actually put in uh, $29.82 for all of the cutoff wheels. And, and like I said, I've got a bunch. Uh, they don't last that long, but because of the fact that they come in bulk, um, I saved a lot of money because if you go to like Lowe's or Home Depot, they're about $6 a piece for like a Dewalt cutoff wheel. So I just went with like a cheap no-name brand uh, off of Amazon and they actually work surprisingly well and they last almost comparable to like a yellow brand type of tool. So that's good. Uh, you can definitely save a lot of money there. Now, next was the actual blade for my chop saw. So I went with an Evolution saw blade and that was $78.75. That's Kind of expensive if you think about it initially, but it can be resharpened. It can be, it's reusable. You can use it for a long time. It doesn't necessarily wear out unless you use it improperly and you don't tighten it all the way. And the saw blade actually will bounce on the tube. Then it doesn't last as long and you'll actually break teeth that way. So make sure your material doesn't spin and your blades will last a lot longer. So I also bought these blue stripper discs uh, to remove any of the mill scale or just clean up the areas before I actually welded them. Uh, I really liked these things to strip paint and they last a surprisingly long time and remove a lot of material, but they don't remove any metal. So that's what's really nice if you're worried about using a flap disc. Definitely don't use a flap disc to clean up a tube because it's really easy to bring a tube down quite a bit of wall thickness in just a few seconds by using like a 60 or 40 grit flap disc like this. Now you still need these, um, but if you're just cleaning up the edges for welding or trying to get rid of some of the stuff on the tube, I would recommend something like this to actually strip them. So I bought, I believe it was a five pack of these and it was one second, $34.99. So a little bit more on the expensive side, but they last a really long time. I still have all of them left. Uh, some of them are a little bit more worn down than this one, but they last a really long time and I still have like two or three brand new ones. Now I still had to buy quite a few of these flap discs to actually clean up all of the coke joints and get them to fit well, um, as well as get rid of any lips and sharp edges and whatnot. So these are still required. 
to actually make this and clean up your edges, especially if you're gonna be notching by hand. Now I bought another cheap, like 10 pack of a non-name brand uh, Amazon special and I spent $20 on, I think it was 10 or 20 of, yeah, it was 10 because they were $2 a piece of these stripper discs. And I went with 60 grit and it lasted a really long time. I still have a bunch of brand new ones that I haven't even touched. Now, depending on how you're actually gonna be notching, those numbers are gonna change. If you're gonna be notching all by hand, you're gonna be using an angle grinder to do most of those and just making like a paper jig or whatever you choose to do to actually make those cope joints. Um, you might need more of the actual cutoff wheels and more flap discs. I was using hole saws for everything because I actually have a notcher and I would recommend getting a notcher because it saves you a lot of time in the long run. So since I actually used a notcher, I got a factor in hole saw blades. So if you use a notcher, you can kind of go off of mine. Now I went with, it total was 57.42. Most of them I bought were at Amazon. And the reason that's so high, not necessarily because I went through a bunch, but I have a bunch of different sizes. So all of these, which are the gussets and whatnot, all require different holes to be in them. Now you could have like a, pneumatic punch and actually like put a hole in there or a step it can do that too but most of them don't go that big um so i bought anywhere from three quarters of an inch hole saw all the way up to two inches um, because these are inch and three quarter dimple dies these are inch and a half these are one inch and then in the back we got inch and a quarter and one inch i believe and i think i even went with two inch in the windshield gusset so like I said, I've got a very large variety of hole saws now, but most of them are still good. I probably only went through like um, three or four of the one and three quarters because those are what you're going to need a lot of because that's what the actual tubing diameter is. So you have to get whatever size your tubing diameter is to actually do the notches. So I went through, like I said, probably four or five of the actual hole saws of inch and three quarter. Now that's pretty much it for consumables that I actually have on my list of items that I had to buy. Um, so next thing, it is optional. You don't have to do it and you definitely don't have to do it the way that I did it, but that's paint. So I went with primer, base coat, and clear coat. Now you could go with just priming it and then um, doing like a single stage paint. That way you don't have to worry about clear coat. Um, that might save you a little bit of money and it'll be a lot easier because it gets rid of one step. Uh, but that's on you. I'm not a professional painter and I'm definitely like, I'm not even a marginal painter type of thing. So this turned out pretty poorly. I'm uh, not going to lie. It's already looking kind of bad just from getting in and out and whatnot. So that's on you. But if you want to know how much I spent on that, it was $325 for primer, base coat, sealer, um, and all the reducers and activators that I actually needed. Now that's 2K, urethane, decent stuff. Um, that I all got online. Um, I did have to go buy some in store, but if you buy it all online and get a gallon of both, then you'll have plenty and some left over in case you want to paint anything else with it. Uh, but like I said, that's optional. So the grand total for stuff, if you just want the bare minimum of to build the roll cage and all the consumables was $1,264.64. So that's what I spent to actually build the roll cage. Um, now with paint, that gets up to 1589.57. So with paint, $1,500, $1,600 technically to do the entire roll cage. Now that total is definitely significantly cheaper than if you wanted to pay someone to actually build you a roll cage. Quotes for a cage that's this sophisticated, if it's MIG welded, are usually between $4,500 to $5,500. Now, that's a fair price to pay someone, I'm not going to lie. It's a lot of work to build one of these, and it takes a long time, especially if they're really good at what they're doing, and they give you a really tight-fitting cage, because mine's probably not that great, and a professional could definitely do it a lot better than I did, uh, because that's what they do all the time. Uh, so definitely... That's a fair price to pay. You should definitely pay your fabricators that much money because that's how much money I would want to do if I did that for someone because it sucked and it took me a really long time. Um, so I would probably say about nine weeks worth of work went into this. Now, like I said, I wasn't working on it every night, uh, maybe a couple hours here and there every week, uh, probably 10, 15 hours on the weekend actually putting into it. So if you factor in that, so about 196 hours approximately 
said, build this. Now, professionals can do it way faster than me, uh, for sure. They usually average this probably in like 100 hours, um, so they could get it built in about two weeks. So that just goes to show that it's definitely worth it to pay uh, if that's what you're gonna do. Uh, now, this isn't the total price. You need a lot of tools to actually be able to build it, then you have to be able to use the tools. I'm not that good with using the tools, but I believe my ability and to me, I would rather spend the money on the roll cage because it would have been $5,500 to buy this, uh, to spend that other $4,000 on all the tools that I need or whatever tools that I didn't have that I need type of thing because I'd rather learn more of a skill and become more proficient at something rather than just pay somebody to do it um, even if I make mistakes and it takes me a lot longer and I have fun doing stuff like this. So that's kind of why I did it, but you have to know yourself. And if you don't have the ability, you don't have a place to do it. Uh, you don't have any of the material. I had quite a bit of the tools and stuff like that to actually do it beforehand. Uh, so that wasn't a huge issue for me. It wasn't like a huge $5,000 cost that I had to spend to buy everything outright. Like I kind of said in the middle of the video, I will be making a video about all the tools that I have that are required to actually build it, kind of go into depth, show those a little bit, and some of the extra ones and some that I found that I don't have that you could have uh, that would definitely improve your experience and the ease of building it, uh, as well as your accuracy of building it and uh, how much time it actually takes. Now, most of the stuff are like bare bone level stuff. You can definitely get super expensive benders that are gonna be super precise and whatnot, but that's not what I can afford, so, and I figured that if you're watching this video, it's probably not what you can afford either, uh, unless you're a professional fabricator and you're just watching this and make fun of me. That's fine too. Uh, but yeah, that's all I got for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, um, and I tried not to talk too much on it, but I think this video still was pretty long. So hopefully I answered quite a few of the questions that I've gotten, uh, and if you're interested in building a roll cage, definitely feel free to ask some more, uh, and I'll try to answer them, whether it's a comment or another video in the future. If you're not already, I would really appreciate it if you subscribed, uh, liked the video, comment, whatnot, let me know how I'm doing, uh, and if you like the build and stuff like that. Stuff like that definitely really helps uh, keep my motivation up when I'm building something like this, uh, and it's cold in my garage, and I don't feel like working in it like it is right now, and I'm making this video instead of working on the car, but hey, uh, I wanted to make this video for a while, and I figured that it's finally at a point where I can actually make a video on the roll cage build. Anyway, that's all I've got for this video. I really need to get back to work on this thing because I've got five weeks now, four and a half actually, to get this thing completely done for a rally. Uh, so there's a lot of work to do. So I'm gonna get back to it. Uh, I'll see you guys with the next video.